The Story of George Washington Carver, written by Ava Moore. Chapter 4, page 21. On Sunday, most people in Diamond Grove went to church, but Uncle Moses stayed home. He worked on Sundays, the same as he did every day. He took Jim with him, and they spent all day out in the fields. George was curious about church. Whenever he get, could get away from the farm on Sunday morning, he would walk to the pretty church and sit on the steps. The sound of the minister's voice came through the closed doors, and George sat as still as he could, trying to hear the words. Most of the time he couldn't understand anything, but it wasn't the talking that came for a way anyway that he came for anyway top of page 22 <clears throat> every now and then the minister would stop talking and everyone would sing the voices were loud and strong and george could hear them perfectly this is what he waited for every sunday it was the singing that he liked george liked to sing too in a soft high voice he would try to sing along with the people inside the church and he sang other times when he was walking through the woods or doing his homework the only time george didn't stutter was when he was singing after a while people began to notice george sitting on the church steps every week on sunday mrs M Baham had news for him. If you like church so much, George, she said, you should go to Sunday school. I just talked with the minister and he says you can go if you want. You can start next Sunday. George could hardly believe his ears. A school right in the church? A school for him? But after the first day, George knew that Sunday school was not the kind of school he dreamed of. In Sunday school, he heard stories about Noah, top of page 23, and Jonah and Joseph. But he didn't learn what made snow and hail. He didn't learn whether or not he could change the color of a flower by changing its seeds. These were the things he wanted to know most of all. Now George was ten years old, older than most of the children in Sunday school. They all went to regular school. If they can, why can't I? he wondered. More and more, George thought about school for black children and in Neosho, eight miles away. If we lived in Neosho, he thought, then I could go to school. Maybe Jim would take me there to live. But Jim did not want to leave Uncle Moses or Aunt Susan and the farm in Diamond Grove. What do we need school for, he said. We have a good life here. Besides, Uncle Moses would never let us go. Yes, he, he, he would, George said. He said we are free. We can go when we want. The next day, George told Aunt Susan and Uncle Moses that he was going to Neosho. He was going to school. Top of page 24. Do you really want to go? Aunt Susan asked him. All by yourself? George nodded. Nobody could make him change his mind. On the day George left, Susan, Aunt Susan made cornbread. She cut it into pieces and stuffed each piece with some bacon and wild onion. These were corn dodgers for George to eat on the way. They were his favorite food. When Aunt Susan gave the corn dodgers to George, she smiled. She was sure that after he had eaten them all and it grew dark outside, George would come hurrying home. There were only a few things George wanted to take with him. His box of wood carvings and some pretty rocks he had found in the woods. He tied them up in a handkerchief. 
George took one last walk in the woods. He stopped at the secret garden and bent over his plants and flowers. Goodbye, he whispered. Then he set out for Neosho.